It's offline too. Let's go, dude. Okay, I'll do Oasis in the meantime. Since I know he's here. I kind of like going through and prioritizing those in chats. I feel like that's natural. Alright, it's uploaded. Oasis versus Whiteout. I haven't heard about this DDD player, but without saying anything, I, more than that, this matchup is solid winning for Link. I would also say it's really annoying to fight if you don't know what you're doing. It's uh, not a trivial matchup. I feel like many of Link's winning matchups are like winning, but you have to know in a matchup. Like you can't just do your own thing and just run over them like some characters can. So game one, uh, PS2. Yay for me. It's top 10 in my city. Ooh, what's, what city is it? What is your address? <laughs> like, uh, what, what kind of region, regional region is this? <laughs> I'm assuming this is offline. That can help by, or help me tell if you could have reacted to some things or vice versa. So, ooh, it looks all online by the stuttering on the stream. Hold up. I'll go back a bit. Okay. Hmm, if it's stuttering in the same places, then it might not be me. Yeah, it's the same places. I don't think it's me. Okay, good punish there. Good punish. Banger? Woo! That was kind of cool. Bit of a um, risky up B, but you got it. You got it. Mm hmm. Let's take a look until you lose your stock. I understand that get up attack. Okay, just take the center stage. Okay, okay. We'll, we'll talk about that later. That's fine. Eye to eye. Oh, it's a banger, dude. It's Texas. There's so many people from Texas that have been to my stream. It's kind of cool. Good advantage state here. I like this. However, one thing I will say before moving on. Uh, this might be one of the worst matchups to use arrows in. Uh, and the reason why is because he can just beat the arrows with Nair. He can inhale it. He's a character that loves to jump. And um, yeah, it doesn't really achieve anything. I, I think it actually just very often might miss on the Gordos as well. Um, right here... Get the bomb involved. The bomb will kill, right? The bomb will kill on less than stellar DI if they're not very close to the ledge, right? Um, you get threatened by being closer, so you could fair him for going high, forcing him to go low, and if he goes high, that's basically suicide versus Link, right? So, keep in mind that arrows are a really specific uh, tool that usually only has a place to shine when they're really far off stage and there's nothing else you can do to apply pressure. If you have a bomb in hand, better. If you can get closer and they're kind of close to the ledge and you want to deny them the high recovery or the two frame um, with an F-tilt, for example, if they air dodge the ledge or whatever, a lot more threatening. Yeah. Raise your hands if you thought this was Michael Jackson. I I'm raising my hand, dude. And I'm also jamming. <laughs> Oh, how is the solo? Hold up. Ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -ba. Scale climb up to the, the tonic. Hold up, hold up. Oh, he's going to minor. Oh 
Modulation. Oh, banger. Let's get back to the VOD. I didn't post Beyblade this time, I swear. Okay, I'll take a listen then. Let's take a listen. Let's listen, let's listen. Destiny? Yo. We let it go in the background while you watch, okay? So yeah, we talked about arrows. Arrows are really specific. Like, it's like your last resort if there's nothing else you can do. And even then, it's even in, in vain. Like, there's, it's so reactable and so avoidable. If, they have, if they're paying attention, it, they'll usually not get hit by it. So here, what could you have done here? You could have uh, full-up fared him, and he would have died. You could have run up F-tilted him, he would have died. You could have thrown a bomb, and if he didn't DI, which is a good chance he wouldn't, because he, maybe he wants to drift away, um, he would have died. And you would also knock the Gordo away. You could have nared to beat the Gordo and also reflect it back on him, for example. Let's keep going. Instead, the arrow kind of got beat out by the side B. Um, I really like your nearing and dashing back uh, and keeping like the platform as a cover, but I would keep staying here. Let him whiff the fair, and then you can set up a forward air pressure, okay? Trying to whiff punish with dash attack or dash grab is really rough on such a fast folly character. Yeah, that's tough. Again, arrows, not really the move. Yo, Yusuf, welcome to the stream. Can I still send stuff in? Yes, you can. I'll probably not go for like too long though. And I have a tendency to get distracted. Really good tech chase. Um, again, do you see what happened here? Um, you're missing opportunities to get good situations. So here, beautiful, like bomb throw to cover the tech chase, beautiful. But here, being in this position at least, will do you a lot of favors, because you can threaten off stage, you can threaten if they go high, um, while here you're kind of out of position, and if he throws Gordos, they will use a lot of travel time before you can reflect them, and by that time he will usually get high back on stage, or uh, even grab a ledge. So aim to have a good position at any moment, and prioritize that over using arrows or projectiles in general. So here, this is a bad position. Because you're unable to do anything about this position. Uh, if Link runs off and airs, he can like threaten this far. Um, so I would stand here. Standing here will also let you cover high. If he for some reason double jumps and air dodges over here, you can follow up back here or up there, right? So it's not like you're missing out by being here. Oh, this song is kind of hype. What could possibly distract you, Jay? <laughs> like any song? Ever? I wish I had VODs. I'm sure the locals will come back in Sweden soon. Like this. Very epic. Again, getting reversal by the Gordo. If you're in a better position, and I would arguably say without bomb, it's easier for you to nair to reflect it back and get rid of it. Um, and if you want to reflect it, I would keep some distance. So you can set up your nair before it hits you. If you run in with a nair, you're kind of hoping that you can time your nair perfectly, reading basically his side B startup. Usually need some space to set up the, uh, the reflect. Uh, sent one into the channel. Beautiful, beautiful. I was listening to this and thinking, I wanted to hear your guitar version of this. I can see if I can 
do that a bit more later. Ooh, and for did you get hit by the Gordo? Let's see what happened. Uh, and again, I don't think th this situation calls for a bomb recovery. Uh, Diddy is not that good at threatening low recoveries. And the one reason to pull bomb here is to bomb recover high. But the problem is he's very well positioned to catch high recoveries. So how here you have to be really careful. You probably have to do like a double jump and then bomb recover to go high. To get around the Gordo. He played really well though. He covered it that angle you wanted to be in. You see what happened here? You pretty much got cornered by him just advancing towards you. So what could you have done differently? Let's take a look. Uh, because you used to be invincible, dude. When you drop down like this, you're invincible for two seconds. Did you know that? Two seconds. You could do anything you want. Uh, I would say what I recommend is maybe dropping down and throwing a straight boomerang here. To cover the platform. And when it returns, it will go a bit lower. So you can get returning boomerang pressure. Uh, basically, this will make him not want to jump. Um, and on the way back, you can get returning boomerang pressure that will also make him want to jump, shield, or roll behind, cornering himself. Right? It doesn't even take that much time to do it. Because if you run in by yourself, all it takes is him to jump over you, uh, roll behind you. Right? You're reading specifically that he retreats, but he has no reason to. At this given moment. Standing here, waiting for the roll, uh, setting up pressure so he doesn't want to jump at least, and get returning Birman pressure that'll help you later, will go a long way to get consistent advantage. Want to be famous? Buy followers, primes, and viewers? Ooh. Can you buy primes? That's kind of hype. Isn't that basically buying your own subs? Just become a Link player who can play guitar and make good analyze. <laughs> That that's the bot that needs to go around, dude. Uh, how do I ban, dude? Ban and then Arto. I can use the ads Arto. There we go. Cleaning up. There we go. There you go. So I'll show you how it looks like. Um, Oasis. So let's say I'm respawning and this is the DDD player, right? Uh, I'll do frame by frame too. So instead of like dropping down and going all in with a slow character who can pretty much only cover a couple of options like are you gonna cover jump or dash grab? That's pretty much it. Um, no, rip, Arto pass, seven, eight, four, five, six. You will be missed. So instead of like going all in, which loses to roll, uh, or even jump ins, it becomes, it becomes pretty much like a pretty bad RPS for you. If you guess wrong, you lose your invincibility Advantage, pretty much. So I would not go further than this, and try to set up a boomerang to help you. Uh, if you do it right, you can also get it just before you land, so the returning boomerang can hit them, if they're kinda tall. Um, making them want to shield, jump, etc. Which you, give you a lot more data to back up reads, instead of going all in by dashing in, jumping in, dash grabbing in, or hard reading a roll, etc. Try to always be the one that doesn't end up being cornered when you're invincible and respawning. Gotcha. Awesome. I'll listen to the song one more time. I just want to pick it up what chord progression it was. What chord is this? Hold up. That's cool. So it's like, um, what is it? Something like that. That's a cool progression. I like it.
I like it. Back to the playlist. So yeah, try to set a pressure in a way without committing. Try to be the one holding center. And if you make them retreat to the corner and you don't get a punish, that's an absolute win. Nothing wrong with that. Especially if you don't know what they're gonna do. Because here he kind of did the opposite to you. You're the one ending up in the corner because he's holding the center really well. Threatening with projectiles, which I told you you could also do. And therefore, he got the upper hand in a situation where you actually had invincibility. So he used the strategy I kind of told you against you to turn the tables. It's real nice. It's really, really nice. Imagine pressing without committing on your positioning. Couldn't be Mario, unfortunately. <laughs> Yeah, you, you could do like a bear and then have a second chance and double jump and catch a jump or immediately dash back, have a lot of air mobility. That's a privilege for sure. Yeah, you cannot up out a shield Nair reliably. Okay. You got the fair, that's good. Mm. So in the same way, there's no point in shooting arrows when you don't... Can, like, it's so avoidable. In the same way, this bomb will never hit. He is invincible. He can catch you if you detonate. It's a very common read to go for. So I would rather keep the bomb there for pressure. Just let it be there. Um, and if he overextends trying to catch you, you can go low, you can recover high if he does so, and then the bomb becomes a bit more important, right? The it is slow in the air. So if you jump in here, by that time... He will not be able to chase you vertically, and he will have a uh, obstacle, an obstacle to deal with when he is not invincible anymore. Let's say he whiffs this back air, lands, you you jump in. Now the bomb forces him to jump where he is slow, um, and you can take advantage of it. So I would keep the bomb around, right? You almost died there, which is crazy. Good bomb recovery. I like this a lot. That was great. But again, you're losing opportunities by shooting arrows. If you didn't, you could have ran in, full up nared him, and down throw, up, up tilt, boom, 25%. Um, maybe we can get even more if you know how to like down throw back air and such. You still got sort of a punish, but you can get it even more reliably. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. I like your movements here. You're positioning yourself really well. However, uh, I would not recommend trying to catch Diddy's landings uh, like this. I would rather try to intercept to begin with, put pressure on the landing, let's say dash back and short up fair, like I talked about earlier. Um, just taking stage control for what it is. You don't have to push buttons here. Uh, if he, I think he tries to commit with a down tilt immediately because you're overextending. Yeah, he did this last time too. So he loves to go for like end lag baits, you can call them, right? He's making you uh, try to whiff punish him. And he basically uses his moves and the fact that ultimate has so little landing lag to bait you to think that it's a safe thing to go for. And then immediately reversals you with a quick wake up option. So you can see this coming and even tr pretend to try to catch him. Empty land and then shield and up behind a shield, for example. Or go for a throw. It's up to you. Stay on the ground. Yeah, at least don't try to do the mistake like uh, we talked about with uh, the station. We talked about using rising aerials to beat um, fast fall neutral air dodge and such options. Uh, if you guess wrong on the timing and if they are dodging through you, they will land before you, getting to reversal you. So it doesn't necessarily mean uh, staying on the ground. It means that you want to land first. So you will not have more landing lag than him, later than him. So you're actionable before him. At least to protect yourself, right? So setting up a low fare could have been a more consistent way to go. Can you tech? Oh my god, that was crazy! Okay, if you tech that, that would have been crazy. Um, so the main thing I want to say is... Try to aim for always having a good position. And if you want to arrow, I would not prioritize arrows or bombs over that. Uh, get here if they're recovering. Um, try to not be directly underneath DDD because he has really good timing mix-ups and a command grab. 
to throw you off, so it's not worth trying to parry or anti-air on the ground. Try to catch the landing by setting it up safely. Make sure to protect yourself from wake-up reversals such as fast fall nair or air dodge into down tilts um, by shielding or dashing away. And yeah, when you're respawning, make sure to use the most out of it. S try to cover options, not overextend. Holding center and get data by covering options that are most important to cover, like roll in, jump in, etc. If they roll away, it's still fine. You have them in the corner. So thank you for sharing the VOD. It was a good watch. I want to play along.